At 2.11 a.m., over Rostov, Voronezh, and occupied Sevastopol, Russian radar screens lit up with ghosts. False echoes, static, and noise. But this wasn't noise. It was the opening act of Ukraine's drone strike, precision warfare, and asymmetric attack. One question. How can $5,000 worth of garage-built drones pull off what billion-dollar bombers were designed to do? Spoiler, they just erased oil, power, and intelligence in one synchronized blow. In the next 10 minutes, you'll discover how Ukraine fused drone swarms with AI navigation to dodge Russia's air defenses. Why striking oil, rail, and intelligence nodes in one night changed Moscow's war calculus. The battlefield math proves that cheap UAVs can paralyze a superpower. This is the science and strategy behind modern drone warfare. The kind of tech story you won't see on TV. Did you know? The Novoshaktinsk refinery alone supplied up to 30% of Russia's frontline fuel. And one drone strike torched it in seconds. Or that the GRU base in Sevastopol, packed with antennas and servers, went blind overnight? Three coordinated strikes. Three shattered targets. Here's how Ukraine pulled off its Grand Slam strike and why NATO analysts are calling it a blueprint for 21st century war. Subscribe for cinematic war tech breakdowns you won't find on mainstream news. Stories where we fuse battlefield tension with the engineering behind it. And before we dive in, drop your city or country in the comments if you believe precision beats power. The night sky over southern Russia wasn't silent. It was haunted. Radar screens glowed across Rostov, Voronezh, and occupied Sevastopol. Operators saw echoes, false pings, and static noise, like sharks circling in murky water. But this wasn't noise. It was the prelude to Ukraine's Grand Slam strike. From 200 miles away, a swarm of Ukrainian drones cut through the dark. Their engines whispered just above the treetops. Each carried one mission, cripple Russia's fuel, logistics, and intelligence backbone in a single synchronized blow. At 2.14, the first drone nosedive toward the Novoshaktinsk refinery. At 2.15, power grids in Voronezh went dark. And at 2.17, explosions ripped through a GRU intelligence base in occupied Crimea. Three strikes, three targets. One night. The question is, how do garage-built drones pull off what billion-dollar bombers were designed to do? Each target wasn't just a facility. It was a nerve center of Moscow's war machine. Novoshaktinsk Refinery, Rostov Oblast. One of Russia's largest oil processing hubs, feeding diesel and jet fuel directly into supply convoys heading for Ukraine's eastern front. Destroying it meant choking Moscow's armored spearheads before they even left base. Voronezh Railway Substation, an unassuming grid node, but strategically lethal. It powered the rail arteries that moved artillery, tanks, and ammunition across Russia's western corridor. Knock it out, and entire trains could be stranded, paralyzed mid-route. GRU base, Sevastopol, Crimea, Russia's Shadow Command, Cyber, Signal Intercepts, and Drone Coordination. A fortress of intelligence. If it went dark, Russian troops along the southern front would be fighting blind. Each site was hardened, covered by layers of radar, Panzer SAM batteries, and electronic warfare domes. This wasn't just a strike on buildings. It was a strike on Russia's perception of invulnerability. But here's the question. If Russia's refineries, rail lines, and GRU bases were so heavily guarded, how could drones the size of motorcycles even get close? The answer lay not in firepower, but in finding the cracks inside Moscow's billion-dollar shield. And what Ukraine attempted next would either rewrite doctrine or collapse in flames. On paper, this mission bordered on impossible. Russia's S-300 and S-400 systems spread like a shield across Rostov and Crimea. Their radars could see 200 kilometers into the sky. Electronic warfare hubs in Kursk and Belgorod pulsed interference across the spectrum, jamming GPS, scrambling drones, frying circuits. And Ukraine had another problem. Distance. Rostov's refinery lay deep behind Russian lines. Voronezh's substation even further. Launching cruise missiles risked escalation. Sending manned jets? Suicide. So Ukraine asked, how do you slip through the cracks of billion-dollar defenses? 
The answer, asymmetry. Use drones small enough to dodge radar. Cheap enough to risk, smart enough to fly in swarms. But this split the kill chain. Each drone would have to navigate, evade jammers, and strike its mark autonomously. If even one lost signal, the entire operation risked unraveling. This wasn't just firepower. It was a gamble on engineering versus empire. The heroes of this night weren't stealth bombers or supersonic jets. They were modified Ukrainian drones, a mix of long-range kamikaze UAVs and loitering munitions, each tailored for its target. At Rostov, the strike package included UJ-26 Beaver drones with ranges of over 1,000 kilometers. Built in workshops that looked more like garages than factories, they carried 40 to 50 kilo warheads, enough to ignite oil tanks into fireballs seen from orbit. For Voronezh, Ukraine unleashed lighter kamikaze drones designed to slip under radar domes. Flying low, hugging terrain, they rode autopilot algorithms trained to weave through Russia's air defense umbrella. Each carried shaped charges meant to fry transformers and plunge railways into silence. And in Crimea, a swarm of loitering munition drones guided by real-time ISR feeds dove into the GRU base with surgical precision. Their warheads were small, but their effect massive. Shredding antennas, command vehicles and power supplies. The brilliance wasn't just hardware, it was doctrine. Ukraine turned drones into distributed weapons, not one bomber striking once, but dozens of autonomous hunters converging in coordinated waves. It was military jazz. Unpredictable, improvisational, but devastating in harmony. The swarm was airborne. Each drone knew its path. Each warhead knew its mark. But theory is clean. Reality is chaos. Could fragile UAVs survive Russian jammers, radars, and interceptors long enough to deliver their payload? The next few minutes would decide triumph or total wipeout. 2.14 AM, Rostov, the first UJ-26 broke through the night sky. Russian radar operators caught a flicker, dismissed it as noise. Seconds later, a drone slammed into a storage tank. A thunderclap ripped the air and fire spiraled 200 feet high. NASA satellites lit up with the signature of burning oil. At 2.15, Voronezh. Two kamikaze drones skimmed barely 50 feet above fields. One nosedived into a transformer yard. Sparks erupted. Grid lines collapsed. Entire railway sectors plunged into blackout. At 2.17, Sevastopol, Russian soldiers awoke to sirens. Overhead, three loitering drones circled like vultures. Then, in perfect timing, they dove, one after another, into antenna arrays and command trailers. Explosions cascaded across the GRU compound. Surveillance feeds went dark. For minutes, Russia's southern front was chaos. No clear eyes. No fuel certainty. No power to move. Three strikes. One synchronized operation. Ukraine had delivered its grand slam. Damage rippled far beyond the blast craters. At Rostov, refinery output was crippled. Analysts estimated a 30% cut in fuel supply to frontline convoys. Flames burned for hours, lighting the horizon like a second sunrise. In Voronezh, rail schedules collapsed. Freight cars laden with shells and fuel sat stalled. No electricity, no movement. In Sevastopol, Russia's GRU base lost antennas, servers, and backup generators. For 48 hours, southern units reported patchy comms, blind to Ukrainian maneuvers. Material loss, tens of millions. Operational loss, priceless. Ukraine had traded a handful of drones, maybe $500,000 worth of tech, for strategic paralysis across three regions. That's asymmetric math cheap precision versus costly empire. This was more than sabotage, it was a demonstration. Ukraine proved it could strike deep inside Russian territory, hitting not just troops at the front, but the arteries that keep them alive. Oil, electricity, intelligence, the invisible lifelines of war. For NATO planners, this echoed a doctrine called multi-domain disruption, breaking your enemy not just by force, but by choking their logistics, fragmenting their command, and leaving them blind. 
For Moscow, the message was sharper. Nowhere is untouchable. Not Rostov, not Voronezh. Not even Crimea's fortress. Ukraine had shown that drones weren't just weapons. They were a scalpel carving through the myth of Russian invulnerability. One night, three strikes, and Russia's war machine stumbled. If Ukraine can cripple oil, power, and intelligence with a swarm of drones, imagine what doctrine looks like when hundreds take flight. Question for you. Is this the future of war? Small, cheap drones shattering billion-dollar defenses. Drop your city or country in the comments and share this video with someone who still believes size wins wars. Because in 2025, precision doesn't just win, it dominates.